Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parts Talk. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, I thought long and hard before doing this particular episode because it had to be looked at from the point of a red pill perspective. Those of you who know what this jargon is, the red pill perspective, men's talking points that they look at in terms of how society treats men in the workplace. Why I say this is that society has us in a conundrum and how feminism has disguised itself as female empowerment and has now resulted in men walking away totally. Now, this video entitled Volvo Dealer aims to boost the presence of women in the auto industry and it is taken from the automotive news website. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. Good morning everyone, I'm Laura Harris. Welcome to this special video report. Inclusivity and a diverse work environment. That's the goal of leaders at One California Store, Volvo Cars Marin near San Francisco. Diana Kennedy is the general manager and a woman pioneer in the auto industry. Coming up in this industry, she never saw many like her. And as her career grew, she found she was still one of the only females in the room. And it really struck me as why are not more women here? I've had the great fortune of being in this business and it's really improved and impacted my life. And I would love for more people to have that same experience too. So let me pause here is that within the last couple of years, and this includes affirmative action, if you're also familiar with that, Western governments here have been trying to boost diversity, particularly women in male dominated industries. Now, women are either refusing to join or stay long term in the auto dealership in industry due to five reasons which I will be highlighting. And I will detail also from my 25 years of experience in the automotive environment. And the number one is is that gender stereotypes and bias. So the automotive dealer industry has long been associated with a male dominated culture and stereotypes that portray it as a masculine domain. Now these stereotypes can create an unwelcoming environment for women leading to bias, discrimination and limited opportunities for advancement. Such biases can discourage women for, from pursuing career in this industry or cause them to leave due to a lack of support and inclusivity. Diane Kennedy here goes about this another way trying to boost the presence of women in her particular dealership but this also because garages shops dealerships and most things that are cars were created by men aims to boost the presence of women in the industry calling it the future Volvo cars Marin has increased the percentage of women on its staff as part of an effort to improve diversity Kennedy says this also helps customers feel more comfortable when they come into the store for service or purchases. And so for me personally, when I'm a consumer and I go into a retail place, I'd love to be able to work with somebody that looks like me or talks like me or can relate. And I believe that women naturally have the skills that it takes to really be successful in this business. These efforts yield a diverse environment that is noticeable to customers. Working in an environment that prioritizes DE and I also allows employees to see other points of view. I don't know why you keep using the word diversity and then it's mostly women that you're actually pushing at the forefront. And this leads to a lack of representation and role models, meaning that the underrepresentation of women in leadership position within the automotive industry can have a profound impact on aspiring female professionals. Now, without visible female role models and mentors to guide and inspire them, women may feel a lack of support and struggle to envision long-term success in a male-dominated environment. And I keep on saying male-dominated environment because we're coming from the era when women were mostly at home and now that they we have the equal opportunity for them to go out and do certain type of jobs I always say do not force women to do what they don't want to do because that will not allow them to fully reach their full potential in certain areas so the absence of relatable figures can contribute to feelings of isolation and hinder career progression not seeing enough women at the forefront not knowing how long it takes to get to a particular position is what I'm trying to relate to workers say it helps remove any assumption about people's ability 
because of their outward characteristics. I believe what makes us stand out is that we are a very diverse group of people and we're all happy. We're happy to come to work every single day. And I think it's a tribute to the culture that we've created in the store. Kennedy wants to increase DE&I in the store, but hiring women is only one piece of the puzzle. Creating a work environment that makes them want to stay is another. And part of that includes finding a way to support others. Why can't we give this to all women in our organization? And so we decided to come up with the Women's Circle. In 2021, Price Sims Women's Circle was born. Starting small, the circle has evolved, and Kennedy hopes it will continue to grow in the future. Meetings are structured around education, personal development, helping the community, and more. But there's also the challenge of work-life balances, the demands of the automotive industry, such as long hours. Irregular schedules and high-pressure sales targets can create significant challenges to achieving work-life balances in the automotive industry. And these demands may disproportionately affect women as who often bear the burden of caregiving responsibilities and face societal expectations related to family and household duties. Difficulty balancing personal and professional commitments can make it less attractive for women to pursue careers in this particular industry. Now, I'm going to be showing you another video of Diana explaining her journey, how she got into the automotive industry. My name is Diana Kennedy, and I'm the general manager at Volvo Cars Marin. I've been in the automotive of industry for 12 years now and I've held various different positions from sales, internet sales, sales manager, general sales manager, and now general manager. When I was 18 years old, I literally dropped out of high school and ran away from home. It was the hardest decision I had to make at such a young age because I literally had no money in my pocket, just a car and a couch to sleep on at my friend's apartment. And to emphasize how detrimental this decision was, my mother didn't talk to me for over a year until we reconciled. I knew the only way to sustain this difficult decision that I made was I needed a job. And college was not an option for me. So as I evaluated all of my options, um, with just a high school diploma, there weren't a lot of options for me. I actually took two years of automotive in high school at vocational school that was offered to us. And I knew that there were other positions available at the dealership. So I just walked into the dealership and not knowing if they were hiring or not, but I walked in and I asked for a job. I was upped by a closer, then interviewed by two sales managers, and I was hired all in the same day. And Most of us have this particular experience because working in the automotive dealership environment, it actually embraces the younger generation for a quick start. And most of us actually start out similar to her story right here because I have gone through it. I bought my house, my car, sent myself through college, sent my kids through school by starting out in the automotive industry. And I'm still in it in particularly because it gives us the opportunity to grow and those dealerships that have been around since the 1970s or earlier you can go there and find employees who have been there since the start or have exceeded over 25 years of service that is how good they are in terms of the remuneration and benefits and if the culture facilitates that because it depends on the particular dealership. Now she explained exactly how her journey began within the sales department itself. Most general managers and managing directors within the dealership usually comes from the sales department, but a lot of them do not grasp the overall concept of what a trace facility is all about. I'm not knocking her, I'm just explaining exactly what my experience was all about as well, comparing it in terms of how the journey of many of us went through this dealership environment. And that began my automotive retail career. I am thankful to my husband whom I met in the car business and we were salespeople together. We now have two children together and we didn't work together for long. Um, it was tough on the both of us with the amount of hours that we worked to be able to have that work-life balance and take care of our kids. 
And it came to a point where we had to make a decision. And my husband graciously enough decided that he was going to take another job and allow me to further my career. A lot of families, believe it or not, were started through workplace relationship, workplace romances, which actually led to marriages and starting families. A lot of our very existence can give praise to that. Some worked, some did not, but everyone has their own stories. However, if you can see here from the Red Pill perspective, her husband actually stepped back and allowed her career to blossom while he played that supporting role. Then comes the Price Sims Women's Circle. It's something that happened very naturally between myself and my co-workers, Katie Guerin, who's our corporate controller, and Savannah Sims, who runs our newest all-electric car brand called Polestar. We all share an appreciation for the automotive industry and how it's changed our lives and has given us the life that we all have today and we're very blessed to have. Our mission is to educate on opportunity and inspire personal development through mentorship, discussion, and experiences within our community to better the lives of women throughout Price Sims. Who I am today is the same person that decided to drop out of high school to create my own path. And while I've evolved as a person, a mother, and a leader, I've always been true to who I am. There have been many difficult times where I felt that I needed to change. A mother, a leader, and a wife. She left out the wife part, giving homage to her husband who actually put his career on pause in order for her to advance. But we don't get these praises much more. And the other pet peeve I have with this particular video, I'm not knocking her, is that at Toyota, we were taught to learn from our predecessors and exceed our predecessors respectfully. What she also didn't mention is that she didn't give homage to the pioneers who helped start the dealership and those who taught her the necessary information and experience that she now has that she decided to impart to other women. Now, when you go into the automotive industry, you go in there young, but you are, you are assigned a manager or someone senior to you to help you show, your, show you the ropes, similar to that of an apprenticeship. <clears throat> when an apprentice goes in to the service department in particular, let's use that there, he is assigned a technician or a master technician who will actually train that particular apprenticeship. And the same goes to when you actually go into the sales department, the parts department, or anywhere else. So a little more respect should be given to those male-oriented figures who actually taught you how to do the job you're actually doing now. Change myself to become like someone else or I wasn't going to be successful. No matter how difficult times got, my experience are what makes me stronger. I've been through COVID, I've been through supply chain issues, I've been through warranty audits, and yet I'm still here today fighting for another day. As I mentioned before, I'll be looking at this from a red pill perspective. No, there are not many positions in a dealership, especially if that dealership is of a particular size. If they're part of a large dealership group, then you have precedence for a lot more positions to be held. But as our good doctor, Dr. Jordan Peterson said here, let's use this example. 99.9% .9 of bricklayers are men. Should we have quotas for women? Is bricklaying representative democracy? That has nothing to do with the question. The question is if there's evidence of structural inequality and oppression because women aren't precisely represented at 50% in all professions at all levels, then why don't we have a conversation about having women represented in all professions at all levels? Why do we talk about the C-suite, for example? Why do we talk about politics and positions of power? Why don't we talk about it across the board? Okay. So the point I'm making here, when a lot of women come into the dealerships, they are looking to go to the next level. The turnover is very high in a dealership environment, as she can mention here, because within 12 years, she became the general manager, meaning that you can look at it from two perspectives. Either that dealership is very small or the turnover is very high in order for her to transition to the very top. Mind you, 12 years is a considerable average amount of time in order to ascend to the very top. However, if you look at it from another perspective, from an automotive management perspective, that's one experience 12 times. Born to not only create women-to-women -women mentorships, but mentorships that are open to anyone to join. This includes both male and female. We actually had the great fortune of having male mentors in our life, and we need that. We need our allies in this business, and we've been fortunate, so we want to continue to grow 
our allyship within our group, but also grow the women members in our group. And when it comes to being a woman in the auto industry, I have so much fun every single day. And um, I really enjoy talking to customers. I really enjoy helping people. I really enjoy seeing people's careers grow in this business. So the men are seen as allies because of the perceived lack of opportunities for advancement for women. So the final point I wanted to make is that the perception of a limited career advancement opportunities can discourage women from joining or staying long term in the automotive industry. The turnover is very high in the automotive industry and it's a very ungrateful industry. Industry. I'm speaking from experience. So if women perceive that their potential for growth and upward mobility is restricted due to systemic biases and glass ceilings, may, they may opt for industries that offer more equitable paths for pro for career progression. A perceived lack of opportunities for development and recognition can undermine motivation and commitment. And the thing is, dealerships have a ceiling as to how high one can grow. Unless you are a part of a large auto group, as I mentioned earlier, that keeps expanding, then there isn't much room for growth. So you're going to have all these women inside the dealership vying for one particular position. You, you, you will only have one sales manager, one parts manager, one service manager. Depending on the size of that dealership again, then you'll have their assistants. Then you have the four men within the, serv within the service department. Then you have HR management, customer service management, and that, that's basically just about it. Oh, and I also forgot the financial controller who controls everything and the managing director or general manager. Dealerships usually comprise of between 50, 30 to 50 individuals, again, depending on the size. Large dealership groups, one dealership may have over 100 employees, but as the wheels turn, they have to constantly be looking at the KPS, the key performance areas, the key performance indicators, the benchmarking, the gross profit margin, their throughput, their CPUs, their capacity, everything else under the sun in order to maintain and fulfill the dealership environment itself because the, as the economy turns, so does the profitability of that particular dealership. So by saying all this, it's crucial to address psychological and behavioral factors to create an inclusive and supportive environment that encourages women's participation and long-term engagement in the automotive industry. But again, why force women into positions that they normally don't want to do? Let's hear from the good doctor again. So the biggest difference that's been discovered between men and women, and this is the one that gets biggest in the Scandinavian countries, is interest. Men are more interested in things and women are more interested in people. And it's a big difference. It's one full standard deviation. And so what that means is that if you are a man, you would have to be more interested in people than 85% of men to be as interested in people as the 50th percentile woman. And you'd have to be more interested in things than 85% of women to be as interested in things as the typical man. M feels, yeah. because the other thing that's happened is that the more egalitarian the society, the fewer women go into the STEM fields. Mm. The fewer, because as you make your society more egalitarian and you open up the opportunity for equality of outcome, you increase how different men and women are, are. What I would love to see is that women go out there, now they have the opportunity to go out there, purchase the land, acquire the land, clear the land, build a foundation, get the franchise, $250 million, put the necessary infrastructures in, the, the air conditioning, the pipes, the furnitures, the settings, the lift, hire everyone, women, and then have a go at it instead of trying to push men aside in order to facilitate more and more women. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it sets a bad precedence. And then we always wonder why men are walking away from this, the silent majority that is. Do you believe there is a gender war? A gender war? Yeah. Absolutely. Feminism is killing this country. Can you be more specific? Feminism has taught us to hate men and to fear men because capital profits off of my fear as a woman. If I'm afraid of men, they can make a profit off of that. There's a gender war because men are the underdogs right now. Men are the ones being told you're feared, you're wrong, everything you do is wrong, go make money, don't show emotion, BBB. Women are making a rise to the top. We've over-feminized so much and included women so much, which is great, but we don't have to tear men down to include women. So why is there so much talk about male privilege? 
Because for a long time there was male privilege and now the, the script is flipped. Now women are the ones with privilege, but no one's ready to hear that. But why are we still talking about male privilege? Because no one's ready for it. We're not ready to make that change. We're seeing more women in films, more women in power. The amount of jobs that I have seen that say women only is ridiculous. In an effort to hire more women and get them hired and include them, we've excluded men. And she's not wrong, basically, because I have personal experiences from three separate dealerships, and we're seeing it here with Diana Kennedy. And I'm not knocking Diana here. She thinks that she's doing what she feels is in her best interest and the interest of the industry and that of the woman she's trying to help. But that will only lead to a larger divide in the society as men continue to go their own way. Let me know your thoughts below. Remember to grab a copy of my ebook, The Parts Manager Guide. Please smash that like button on your way out. It will only take you 1.5 seconds to do so. Until next time.